Dinotracker Axle Day. All right, so with the Dinotrack Trail Leader package, it comes with a complete Pro Rock 44 front axle. And then for the rear, they give you the parts to upgrade your rear uh, axle. So uh, the stock housing, they believe, is fine enough uh, for a 44. It's not really worth upgrading unless you want to go to a 60. So they give you the parts to upgrade to a 35 spline. Um, and then it comes with basically a new diff cover. All the gears and gearing upgrades, axle shafts, and then in this case, an ARB air locker. So that's what's going in today. I'm out here at World Tour Off-Road, and uh, we're going to get going. So I hope you don't mind. I was going to do a very concise video just documenting the install of these rear gears and, uh, and axle upgrades. But to be honest with you, it was such a fascinating thing to watch Paul work, and he's really great at explaining things along the way. So I decided to expand this out to several videos and allow it to be an learning opportunity for those of you who are interested. So all this black stuff is just crud. sludge. It's, it's failed oil that is separated and really burned to carbon, which creates like a film, which is really like putting a blanket on in the summertime. That big thick sludge is preventing the oil from really pulling the heat out of all the metal parts. So this is why we really encourage uh, premium synthetic gear oils only because they don't fail and and burn up and, and, and allow for that sludge which just stores heat. And the other concept that we promote is that often people think that the gears fail. That's, that's the myth. My gears failed, my gears failed, my gears failed. Well that black sludge isn't going to have as a big of an impact on the gears as it is the bearings. So when you entomb the carrier bearings and then those two pinion bearings and that black sludge, you really are preventing the, the moving clean oil from pulling the heat out of those bearings that are in the cramped tight spaces. But the gears are out in the open space. So even with, even with you know, compromised oil, they still don't see the same damage that those little uh, carrier and pinion bearings do. Hmm. So that's what we're, we're with, when oil looks like that, we're really worried about what happened to the carrier and pinion bearings. Once the bearings fail, then chatter and things like that start happening, which chatter is, you know, gears actually banging, vibrations, on the gear set, and that's that leads to damage in the gear. And and really, this set is seen damage already. So all these spider gears are all shipped up. The spider gears themselves do have some pieces that, that we call bearings, but they look more like a washer. And they're, they're behind here. And then you have this cross pin. The cross pin sees wear too. So when the cross pin starts wearing, this top and bottom here that I'm pointing at here, they start to get some play in them. So that can cause chatter. In the case of this particular one, this is a Dana Spicer limited slip track lock carrier and it has rows of clutch plates and steel washers on each side and what that does is that allows tension on the spider gear so you have better traction when the oil gets that dark the clutch plates in there get carbon pulled into them so when it's spinning around and, and you're doing your regular driving that carbon really is abrasive, just like sandpaper. That's spinning around and grinding into those clutch plates, which are a designed wear item. They have a lifespan, even for best case scenario. But with burnt oil, it's gonna drastically reduce the lifespan of those clutches in there. We refer to um, Dana Spicer's recommendations 
are that are well published and documented, they are saying that it needs to be changed anytime the axle is submerged, as you mentioned. And they also say that anytime that your axle may have experienced a high heat environment. So it's going to kind of be up to each person to kind of recognize what a high temperature environment was for them. So if you have 37 inch tires and you've had your vehicle in low range, you know, you might be screaming at 3000 RPMs and your vehicle's moving about maybe eight miles per hour, 37 inch tires, that's a lot of torque. Mm -hmm. So that is probably in that higher So if we did it right, we'd say you should change your, your gear oil after every off-roading trip to do it right, right? I do that in my own personal Jeep. But I, my own personal vehicle, I take off-road about once a month. If I'm doing two trips close back to back, maybe I'll wait, it, wait and do it the next trip. But um, when I'm so for us, so those of us that wheel like three times a year, we have no excuse for correct. not just changing your dip oil. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You see what I mean? It was just super cool to hang out and uh, and watch him work. And even though I'm basically paying him to do the gears, I don't I don't do gears, and and I had no idea how involved it was, but now I do. So anyway, that's why I'm sort of dragging this out. I'm just gonna let it run. I'm gonna try and you know skip, um, you know, a few things. But uh, if there's some interesting tidbit that he thought was important enough to share with me, I'm gonna go ahead and share it with you. I was pretty much filming the entire time. So it's not going to be 100% inclusive, uh, but it's going to have a lot of little tips in it. So if you want to get to the actual Dynatrack um, upgrades, uh, that'll be a couple of videos away, uh, but I'm going to let this play out. For off-road use normally, if you don't have a slide hammer with you and you need to pull a shaft, you put, two, you put some lug nuts back. So you basically your reverse backwards. your disc. Okay. That was much easier. It sure is. These carrier straps uh, were machined in place by the manufacturer. And in a lot of cases, if you look close, you'll see, and this one has an H stamp sideways and an H stamp sideways. Um, this, this side over here has a poorly stamped vertical H here and a vertical H there. But to, to remove all doubt, before we disassemble anything, and this is an industry standard, um, is we mark them ourselves. So I put one punch mark in the top left and two punch marks in the top right so that we know exactly what we're doing. These are pre-cast and then post-machined in place before the axle tiers are slid in. So if we ever get those mix with mashed in a way that we don't know how they went back, you know, it's kind of a pain in the butt trying to reverse engineer, figuring out where they came from. It's just a huge waste of time. But also importantly to note, if, if you ever were to break these, you know, you know, catastrophic, really catastrophic gear failure, then uh, you, you probably would just get a new axle. Hmm. Modern shafts, I'm not super convinced this is critical anymore. Oh, the realignment? But I do mark these out of habit. These are great, normal vehicles, they're smooth and quiet, very minimal vibration, but off road use, not a good pick. Here's how we know this is a balance. Uh, yeah. These holes that were drilled in, in here were to remove oh, okay. weight.
All right, this is the old one. Anybody want some 373 gears? Here you go, for sale. Never off road. Be a hand model. <laughs> That's your best thought, I trust me. <laughs> So with, I've built these custom yoke tools for most yokes, um, but it allows me to feel what's going on a lot better. That saves time later. notice is that when the ring gear is in here spinning in a circle and you're driving forward it's rotating forward the oil flings off of it and onto the top of the housing and I don't know if you can see this in my hand the way but it it falls down into this cave that right. cave dumps out into here and that space is in between the inner pinion bearing and the outer pinion bearing. So that space fills up and some of that oil is it's gonna puddle up there until it flows through the through the bearings and drops back to this main area where the majority of the oil is. So it's the ring gear that actually is circulating the oil as it moves. And depending on whether the axle is a high pinion or a low pinion, kind of changes this general design a little bit but one thing that all these housings have in common is they all have a way to pull the oil up a little bit so that the most forward or outer pinion bearing is always getting oil and that's really important um, that it's that it doesn't have the same small amount of oil there the whole time that actually has the ability to circulate. 